What is up everyone and welcome to another video on this Acer Aspire L3600. For those of you who didn't see this on my channel about 10 months ago, I got this as a free PC to do as I please and it's been sitting upstairs rotting away for the longest time. I've been waiting to see what I'm going to do with it. But recently, um, well very recently, earlier today and yesterday, I've spent quite a bit more money on uh, the final big project for IMNC HQ Mark 1. So because of that, I'm selling a couple of things on eBay to make up a little bit of the money that I've spent on that. Um, so this Acer PC is one of them. Now originally what I was gonna do is I've got this brand new compact keyboard and I've also got a mouse to match. They're both USB, I've, both, uh, I've got the original packaging for both of them. Um, I was gonna basically clean this all up wipe the hard drive, install Windows 7, install Office, and sell it for just under £100 of the original power supply with a nice keyboard and mouse as a, as a cracking little Office PC for someone, or a family computer or something. But the specifications are actually a little lower than I remembered. So I've decided to step it down a notch, make my life easier, but earn slightly less money from it, uh, even though I don't think I would have earned what I originally thought I was going to anyway. So this has a Windows Vista license on it. I'll restore Windows Vista to factory, uh, so keep Vista on there, uh, rather than wasting time faffing around with putting a new OS on this machine. Other than that, I'm just going to make sure all of that is operational and all of the drivers are installed, so that the person that gets it has a working system. I'm going to uh, fault check everything, including the optical drive and various parts of the system, uh, the Wi-Fi card, just to see if everything is up and running. Then I'm going to give the system a damn good clean because it's absolutely filthy. So I'll hopefully uh, pop the top cover in this video and we'll see how much of this we can disassemble to get in there with a little bit of canned air and uh, possibly some other cleaning methods depending on how bad it is. Now this system, it's a compact PC, so it does have an external 19 volt power supply. It's quite good that this is included because these sell for about 30 pounds on their own. Um, so this is an attractive part of the purchasing decision on uh, on eBay for someone. But yeah, I hope to scrape, you know, 50 quid or something for this. It would be really cool just to make back some of my money that I've spent on other projects recently. I'm not low on cash or anything like that, folks. I know a lot of you like to be concerned about my uh, financial situa <laughs> situation. And I've had a couple of people worrying like, oh, Tom, you're spending quite a lot of money on cool... Uh, nerd stuff for the channel um you're not going to be able to afford your washing machine guys it's all separate money it's a separate pot um luckily i've been quite smart with my finances throughout last year and uh the beginning of this year so without further ado let's attempt to power up this guy so i've got a uh, dvi connected for my test monitor i've also got the keyboard and mouse connected by usb and also lan so in three two one go one thing I like about these compact PCs is for the most part they're very quiet uh, and power efficient. So that is one attractive thing to buying one of these. As you guys can see it's pinged straight up, it's posted straight away. Uh, yeah, start Windows normally. And like I said, this is Vista. So I can't actually remember what we did last time. I think we just booted this up. I got this with a monitor as well, but I've since sold the monitor. I think we just booted this up and uh, and had a look at the specifications. I don't think we did anything drastic. And on the monitor side of things, folks, I actually sold three random flat screen monitors that I had. Two of them were 16 by nine. Uh, one was a 17 inch, one was a 19 inch, and one was a four by three 15 inch, I believe. Uh, okay, so this PC yeah, still has user accounts and all sorts of things on it, so that's okay. We'll just jump into... Uh, the primary administrator user account for now. Yeah, someone got a steal. They won all three of those monitors from me on eBay uh, for about 20 quid, including postage, so that was brilliant. Uh, so I'm probably gonna blur out the video here, folks, just to hide personal information and stuff. So there's no point in me devoting any time to uh, fiddling with this system further than I need to. It's only got a 1.6 gigahertz Pentium in it with one gig of RAM, and it's got a 32-bit OS, of course, and an 80 gigabyte drive. So I'm basically going to restore Vista um, to its original factory point and clean it out and that is it. There's no point in me doing anything else. Also the hard drive is clunking away. It sounds as if it's going to die any minute but <laughs> they can go on like that forever so I'm not too concerned about that unless it actually dies on me in which case 
Um, I may be selling this for spares and repairs because there is no way it's worth me putting one of my spare hard drives in this system. I assume it's a 2.5 inch laptop drive and at the moment due to all the PC repairs I've been doing, all the laptop repairs, I've only got one spare um, laptop drive kicking around here and that's a one terabyte black so there's no way I'm going to devote that to this system. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to get on with restoring this and hopefully I'll be back with you guys in not too long. I can imagine this taking an absolute age with this hard drive and this system and Vista. But yeah, this, this has got crud all over it. It seriously needs restoring. So after Vista giving me all sorts of problems and not playing ball, we're booting up into the Acer Restore Manager by holding Alt and F10 on Startup. Uh, restore system to factory default. That is what we want. Fantastic, okay. I tried to use the built-in Windows Restore, it was having none of it. So click OK if you want to continue, blah, blah, blah. Okay, hopefully this works. Um, and when I, when I slag off Vista, guys, I'm not talking to anyone personally, you know, I'm not having a personal go at anyone. I remember last time I slagged off Vista in one of my videos, someone was quite hurt in the comment section and was like, I use Vista every day on my main machine, blah, 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 it's great. You know, if you use something and it works for you, then that's great. But personally, I've had bad luck with Vista, so um, it's not really something that I want to be dealing with too much. But this little Acer Restore tool seems to be looking okay at the moment. Um, I'm glad I looked on the website and saw that this was built in. Um, and yeah, what are we doing now? Oh, we're actually restoring. So that's fantastic. It should restore to factory settings. I'm going to leave this, leave this do its thing. And uh, we'll come back to it when it's done and hopefully clean out the system. Just a little close-up sound of the hard drive, folks, if you can hear it. Yeah really quite loud and, and rough but this seems to be going at a decent pace so I'm happy with that. So the system is restarting folks um, hopefully my camera will catch up with itself now and uh, focus in once it's got something to focus on but yeah basically what it did was uh, yeah that's that's a little bit better what I did well I didn't do anything what it did is it restarted after the utility sat at the Vista setup splash screen for about 10 minutes and then did absolutely nothing. So I'm expecting this automatic restart to have something to do with that process. But I have had a lot of this as well, black screen with a cursor. So I'm literally just waiting. Hopefully the new user setup, uh, welcome to Vista screen will eventually ping up and uh, then we know we're good to go. And we know that the restore actually worked so there we have it. So I'm not too sure about disassembling this guy. Uh, it looks to be an interesting design. Can't even remember if we disassembled it in the last video. I don't think we did. One thing that I will say is this stand uh, is quite annoying because it prohibits you from lying the system down. It does have like a, a coin slot in it. So can you just keep twisting the coin slot until it comes off? This is one thing that we're going to experiment with together right here, folks. By the feeling of it, you can indeed. It would be easier to use a flathead screwdriver, uh, but I've got a coin to hand. And yes, the stand is off. That's a good thing, because as you guys can see, look at that. That is caked with dust. Absolutely vile, to be perfectly honest, folks. So that needs a good going over outside. Um, but now that that's out the way, we, we can properly take a look at the PC and how we're going to go about disassembling it. Um, so, at the back here you can see all of our I.O. and where the two fans are. And you can also see that the case is lifting here. So, I believe we did open this, folks. I, I got memories of opening it. Oh, there's no screw in the back. And it's a 3.5 inch hard drive. Shocking. I've got plenty of those. Um, so it looks as... <laughs> Check that out guys, little handle inside. These systems are fairly odd, aren't they? Um, yeah, okay. What on earth is all this about? Let's pop off the front bezel as well because we all want to clean that and clean underneath it. Can we actually, oh God, that's disgusting. Can we pop it off? Doesn't look like we can pop it off without moving the front panel connectors. Um, maybe that's a single connector on the board, but we're going to have to pop off the rest of the casing in order to find out. Somehow disassemble this a little bit further 
um, in some way. So I've looked all around for screws and stuff, uh, can't see anything. I've even peeled back the rubber feet on the bottom or top of the case, depending on how you're looking at it. Yeah, it is the bottom. So this big handle is here. I just gave it a little tug and noticed that the whole system was loose. So uh, I guess the handle's there for a reason. Let's give it a good old yank and see what happens. There must be a way that you're meant to yank this. We found it, folks. Little black screw, single, small, very little, tiny, insignificant screw holding in, attached just down there. We can now pull up on this ribbon cable for the optical drive. Can quite happily unclip the power and data cabling for the drive can quite happily unclip. So this is quite a nifty little design. This is almost like a suitcase of drives. So you've got your slimline DVD burner in there, which has seen <laughs> better days. And you've got your hard drive there. And then we get onto the good juicy stuff. This is where the RAM sits. This is where everything sits. So there is no Wi-Fi card in here by the looks of it. That is where I'd assume a Wi-Fi card would go. Very interesting, folks. We've got a little compact CPU heatsink here. Um, yeah, this is all proprietary guts. Nothing that we can salvage in here that's of any use or anything like that. So our best case scenario is to just go outside of the can of air and blow it out. Um, the front panel connector is here all in one, so that's good. We can get the front panel out of the way. So if we just unplug that, pull that through, that leaves us with a totally free front panel. So we've got three main separate bits to this system. We've got the system itself, which contains the motherboard and of course the CPU, CPU heatsink, RAM and the majority of the casing. We've got the front panel that includes some minute circuitry for the various front panel buttons. No front panel ports, they're all on the front of the motherboard here directly, or in fact Note they're on a riser card, apologies, but they're still part of this other bit, so this is just a front bezel. And then we have the drive suitcase, which is the name that I have come up with for this. Although it's more like a drive hat box. This is like the top of a hat box or a cake box or something like that. Anyway, guys, I'm going absolutely, uh, absolutely balmy over here, but this is the inside of the system. Nice design, um, but of no use to me. So it's time to clean it out as best as I can and uh, then clean up the exterior when we put it back together. So thanks to the rain, I had to really rush that and just do a little bit in the doorway. Nowhere near as thorough as I would have liked, but just general blowout to get rid of the majority of the big clumps of dust. This system is still very dusty, but it's not going to make a massive difference to whoever buys it. Uh, the, the inside is relatively clean for what it is, and the fan vents are a tiny bit cleaner. I may get them with a toothbrush before listing it, who knows. Um, but I'm still going to give the exterior a wipe down and, and things like that. But we did forget to clean the most vital component, the one that looked the most awful of them all. So uh, yeah, I'm not going to bother going back downstairs. We'll just hang out the window and do it. So at the moment, I'm just having one of those times where it's just like, get things done as quickly as possible without any ifs or buts or hassle. So here is the disgusting stand. Here is what's left of my can of air, um, which is pretty much nothing. Let's see how much of this dust I can remove. Well, the answer to that is hardly any, so I'm gonna give it a wipe with a cloth. So the time has come to reassemble this bad boy. Let's do it. So there it is folks, all back together. Um, I'm gonna give it a quick clean over, a quick wipe over with a cloth, um, get rid of most of the dust, and then we'll power it on one more time to check that it still works because I disassembled it. The only tricky part about putting this back and something to look out for is the multi-pin connector 
for the front panel has got quite a lot of pins so it's very easy because it's quite far down into the system to just push it in and think that you've connected it correctly but in fact you need to make sure that the pins are like, uh, lined up it doesn't have a guide it's not like a USB header on a motherboard or anything like that it doesn't have a plastic guide so it's very easy to put the connector in one step too far to the right or left so that's one thing to look out for but other than that it's uh, absolutely fine. Oh, and the cables go into the hard drive upside down as well. Um, so, you know, instead of forcing them in the wrong way. But that is that, uh, with the stand back on as well. So all success. Like I said, I'm gonna give this a really quick little scrub. Well, folks, after a tiny bit of general scrubbing, the system looks a lot better. I haven't gone to town on it because uh, it's not worth me spending any more time on it, but it does look a lot better now, especially the stand. The stand looks great. I've even scrubbed underneath in that, and while this system is still very scratched, it looks a lot better. So let's test it out to see if it's still working. Beep, that's a good sign. Acer, that's an even better sign. Let's see if it boots up into the uh, Vista. Ah, oh, start. Oh, damn it. Hang on a second. Okay, so keyboard is now connected. I'll make sure that I shut it down properly this time so that uh, that message doesn't come up for the new owner. Seems to be much snappier after uh, restoring the system. Still making just as much noise though. Yeah, very, very loud hard drive. And here we have it. That is it, folks. So, that is everything that I wanted to show you today. I'm basically making a little bit of money uh, digging through some things upstairs to help me pay for a project that I'm going to be doing in the next week or so uh, on the main channel, which will be the last big project in IMNC HQ Mark 1. Think of it as a celebration of the... Uh, the seven years or whatever it's been that we've been doing videos in this room you know eight or nine if you include the earlier stuff on the the first channel um but yeah that's it if you want to check out my auction for this guy there'll be a link in the video description i'm gonna have a buy it now option with a make an offer probably um but if that doesn't work out i'll put it on auction and yeah this is a nice little system that hopefully someone out there will have something uh that they can do with it so that's it. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.